Something in space is attacking the brains of our astronauts. They can penetrate your body, they can damage cells, they're nasty. The effects are not fully understood, but the consequences could be fatal. The brain ultimately becomes overwhelmed. Rational thought can mean the difference between life and death. Since the dawn of the space program, NASA has selected humanity's best and brightest to be astronauts. We went to the Air Force Hospital in San Antonio, Texas, and we had a physical. It was a 10-day physical, and when we finished the physical, they knew more about me than I would ever even want to know. They take fighter pilots, engineers, and scientists at the peak of their physical and mental powers. They were combat pilots, they were test pilots. They were not going to lose it. But in spite of the rigorous screening, when these men get into space, strange things start to happen. The first incident occurs when astronaut Rusty Schweikart steps out into space during the Apollo 9 mission. The experience lasts only five minutes, but changes Schweikart forever. All of these questions just keep flooding, flooding into my mind. I mean, what am I doing here? Who am I? What does it mean when I say I? What was happening? What was going on? Schweigert is clearly overwhelmed. He's lost all sense of the mission. And for a short period of time, he was no longer a valuable asset. And Schweikart's experience is not an isolated incident. In the 1950s, an American psychiatric report warned that astronauts need to have stringent psych evaluations done because they found that they had bizarre motivations for wanting to go to space. They call it space madness. It's a big deal for NASA. If an astronaut loses it, that's the biggest potential threat to any space mission. Dealing with the threat of space madness is still part of every astronaut's training. There's a procedure for a psychotic crew member. In that case, you would use duct tape to try to restrain the person and then administer a sedative. Neuroscientist Dr. Andy Newberg has conducted his own analysis of what's happening to astronaut brains. I always noticed that there was a big difference between those who had actually gone up into space and those who had not. It seems to reshape the way our brain works. The normal parts of our brain can get all out of whack. Other things that can happen in zero gravity include things like hallucinations, where you might hear something or smell something. A, a common phenomenon, for example, with astronauts was that they would see flashes of light. Initial research suggests that microgravity can inhibit the release of vital mood-altering hormones in the brain. But not everything that happens to astronauts' brains can be explained by gravity. There's another destructive force assaulting space travelers, potentially even mutating them. When astronauts are up in space, they get exposed to a lot more radiation than we are down here on Earth. They can penetrate your body. They can break the DNA in the cells themselves. They're nasty. Uh, a destruction from the radiation of brain tissues that will make the brain not work as well. No one knows exactly how badly radiation is mutating our astronauts' brains. One thing is for certain. The deeper we travel into space, the greater the threat it poses to NASA's mission and the lives of our astronauts. April the 19th, 2013. Cosmonauts Pavel Vinogradov and Roman Romanenko step out into the vacuum of space. They're about to begin six hours of work on one of the strangest experiments in the International Space Station's history. The Russian experiment is called BioRisk, and one has to wonder what's really going on there. According to the Russians, the BioRisk project is designed to investigate the effects of solar radiation on living organisms in space. Cultivating life forms on the outside of a spacecraft is a high-risk activity at the best of times. 
while the two cosmonauts focus on completing their tasks, something appears in the darkness behind them. The objects are seen to be flickering. These little dots seem to be blinking. They seem to be winking. It's impossible to figure out exactly what these objects could be. The objects are eerily reminiscent of a phenomenon first encountered by John Glenn on the first Mercury program mission. The objects become known as space fireflies. When there were first reports about so-called fireflies, people raised a lot of eyebrows to say, that's ridiculous, there's nothing up there, it can't be. Nobody believed it. They thought they were simply illusions. NASA's investigation into Glenn's sighting concluded that the fireflies were ice crystals shed from his mercury capsule. But the mysterious objects surrounding the ISS aren't following the same pattern of behavior. NASA explains these things called fireflies as ice particles. And sure, there are ice particles in space, but ice particles don't change direction. They float in the same direction. These things seem to move under intelligent control. The problem is that many of these objects are seen behind the ISS against the blackness of space. In such a position, it's really hard to gauge their size. You don't know if they're large or small, near or far. Whatever they were, the mystery object's appearance marks the beginning of one of the most disturbing chapters in the history of the ISS. Soon afterwards, the space station's ammonia cooling system suffers a major malfunction. A serious ammonia leak can create a serious problem on the station because with the cooling loop down, your electronics that are on that loop have to be turned off and you lose major function. The ISS carries two cooling loops. With one down, the situation could become critical. In the event a backup fails, the astronauts' lives could be in danger. Astronauts Chris Cassidy and Thomas Marshburn conduct an unscheduled spacewalk to fix the problem. There are no unscheduled spacewalks on the International Space Station unless there's an emergency. But when Cassidy and Marshburn reach the supposedly faulty pump, they find no trace of any leak. NASA's official position is that there was an ammonia leak, and they traced its cause to a faulty valve in a coolant pump. Whether there was any possible connection between the leak and the appearance of the fireflies remains uncertain. 